So good afternoon, everybody. Um, so today what I'm gonna be planning on talking about is crop tree release. I'm actually gonna show you a few different videos here. And these are actually videos that I created for one of my forestry classes at Hawking College. Um, so we'll just go ahead and kick it off with a introductory video on crop tree release. I think it runs about two and a half minutes. All right, so we are out here today uh, getting ready to discuss crop tree release and crop tree management. So the fundamental idea behind crop tree management is to enter a younger stand, so such as what you're seeing here. This stand is perhaps 30 years old, maybe 35 years old, so it's a reverting clear cut. And the idea in this stand is to come into the stand and locate your best quality trees or your crop trees. So we are looking at managing this forest from both a timber perspective and a wildlife perspective. Um, with that in mind, we are wanting, uh, we are preferring to find oak trees to select and to manage as our crop trees. So as you can see here, this tree that's painted with blue here, it's a fairly uh, nice black oak that we are gonna be managing for. And the, uh, the idea with crop tree is once you locate and you find your best quality trees, you look up at the canopies of those trees and you try to divide that up into basically four different quadrants. So if you're kind of a, looking at the tree from a bird's eye view, um, divide that up into four quadrants and see how much room that tree has to grow outward. So in general, a tree that has no room to grow outward, which is referring to a tree that has a free to grow rating um, of zero, so in each one of those four quadrants, it can't grow outward. Um, that tree may grow about two inches in diameter over a 10 year period. If you compare that to a tree that has a free to grow rating of four, meaning that in each one of those quadrants that we would look at, um, the tree has room to grow outward. A tree in that uh, free to grow rating may grow twice as fast, up to maybe four and a half inches in diameter over a 10 year period. So the reason why this is beneficial is not only are you putting more diameter on your best quality trees, because um, they're growing twice as fast. But those trees are also gonna be uh, producing larger canopies, which will end up resulting in more mass production. So oaks are very beneficial from a hard mass production standpoint, producing those acorns that will help wildlife survive through those winter months. All right, so one of the questions that will usually come up in these types of presentations is, you know, how do we go about selecting crop trees? What are the criteria that we end up looking for? And really that's going to be based upon your management objectives. So why it is that you own the property and what it is you're hoping to get out of the property in the future. Um, so as in that video, I talked just a little bit about wanting to manage that property for um, not only a timber standpoint, but also a wildlife standpoint. Um, so finding species that will end up meeting your goals is really important. Um, another one of the uh, common things to manage for um, is aesthetics. Um, so just finding trees that you find aesthetically pleasing. Um, for example, in a crop tree release uh, job that I completed here in Hawking County, um, I had a landowner who was very interested in keeping a handful of sweet birch trees around. Um, so trees that aren't going to really be valuable from a timber standpoint or really much from a wildlife standpoint, but just from an aesthetic standpoint, we wanted to keep a variety of species around and um, just basically attribute um, and uh, make sure that there's um, a variety of tree species out there in the forest. One of the things that you also need to consider when selecting crop trees is making sure that those crop trees are well suited to the site that they're growing on. Um, and so this really relies on some underlying uh, knowledge of the trees and where they like to grow. Um, and so this is where a forester can really come in handy. Um, and that is making sure that you're not trying to manage for black walnut trees up on a ridge because black walnut trees uh, like to grow in rich, moist, well-drained soils. Um, so if you try to manage for those black walnuts on top of a ridge, they're probably not going to do very well. So even though they might be a good timber quality species or in a good wildlife species, 
they're probably not going to be matched for the site. And so that's something that's important to to keep in mind um, when you're going about uh, selecting crop trees as well. But essentially with crop tree management, you're looking for the biggest and the best trees that you have. So those biggest, those best trees that you have, those are the trees that you're going to want to focus your efforts on. In terms of the age of the stand or the size class of the stand that you should be working in, um, typically we think of this as being past the sapling stage of the stand um, and up into maybe the pole size stand. So really anywhere from your average tree diameter being two inches in diameter, maybe up to eight to 10 inches in diameter um, is going to be a, a good size class of trees uh, to get in and manage uh, using this crop tree uh, management technique. Um, the earlier that you can get into the stand, so the younger that you can get into the stand, the more choices that you're going to have because there's going to be a lot more trees per acre in a younger stand than compared to an older stand. So the younger the stand, um, the more choices that you're potentially going to have. So one of the other questions that will usually come up is how many crop trees should I try to select uh, per acre? Um, the, the general guidelines is not to choose more than 50 crop trees per acre. The reason why is because when our forests get to maturity, you're probably gonna have somewhere between maybe uh, 50 to 80 trees left per acre. Um, so going about and you know, selecting and doing a bunch of work around 150 trees per acre um, when most of those trees aren't going to have the opportunity to survive in the long run, probably doesn't make a lot of sense and you're kind of wasting time and energy. So somewhere around 50 um, and it can go as low as perhaps five to 10 trees per acre. It, it all depends upon what it is that you have um, there in your forest. The more good high quality trees that you have, the more um, trees that you can select and the more that you can manage for. I'm going to show a, uh, another video here that talks a little bit about um, which trees to select in the uh, release operation. Um, so once you have selected your crop tree, um, what do you do from there? Okay, so what we're going to talk about here is releasing uh, the tree and so determining which trees should be cut down and why we want to cut those trees down so here we have our blue mark tree this is our crop tree um, next door we actually have a, a smaller uh, black oak uh, marked in red this is going to be a cut tree um, so if you scan up and look at the canopy of these two trees you'll see that the two trees are competing for sunlight um, now it is acceptable to leave um, two oak trees or two crop trees next to one another but you want to avoid leaving three crop trees all in a line. So you, don't, you want to avoid the situation where you have multiple crop, three crop trees all together. Um, and if you scan over this direction, you'll see where there's actually um, what looks to be a, a red oak over there that's a crop tree as well. So we have three oaks all in a line here, um, and we only really want to keep two of those. Um, so this is the least favorable of the oaks. So this is going to be the one that we're going to cut and remove. And by removing this tr tree here, it should give sunlight to one side of this tree and also give some sunlight to the other tree over there. So when we are looking at um, deciding which trees to go, um, these smaller trees here, these really understory trees, um, are having no impact upon our crop tree. And so these do not need to be cut down. You can, um, the only reason why I would cut down one of these trees is if it was in the way of cutting down one of the, the larger cut trees. So essentially what we're doing is a crown touch release. So if, the, if a tree is competing with the canopy of your crop tree, then it's a tree that you would want to cut down unless it happens to be another crop tree. So with this crop tree that's marked here, we're going to be cutting down uh, one, two, three trees over here, a third tree over here, and maybe a fourth tree on this side. And that will give this tree, should give this tree a tree to grow rating of four. So with crop tree management, once you have selected those crop trees, 
Um, you want to make sure that you're giving those trees a, what we would refer to a free to grow rating of three or four. Um, so if you end up finding that giving your, so you go out and you select a bunch of crop trees and then you start releasing those crop trees and you start saying, well, maybe I just don't like the way my forest is starting to look. It, it looks like I'm cutting down too many trees. Um, then one of the things that you should do is um, decrease the number of crop trees uh, instead of releasing each crop tree less. Um, so instead of giving each crop tree a free to grow rating of one or two, it would be better in the long run to release less crop trees, but give those crop trees still a free to grow rating of three or four. One of the questions that usually comes up with regards to uh, crop trees is um, when you create these canopy gaps by removing those trees, um, how, uh, how much time does it take for those canopy gaps to close? And so usually what will happen is when a tree has the opportunity, a tree will grow outward about one foot a year. Um, so if you have trees growing on, you know, basically on both sides of the canopy gap, which is going to be the case, um, you'll see those canopy gaps close at about two for foot um, every year. So if you create a 10 foot canopy gap, that should be closed in about five years. If you have a um, 20 foot canopy gap, it should take about 10 years to close. So um, what changes should you expect in your understory? Um, so in, in a lot of cases, you're gonna be uh, working in stands that may look like this prior to um, a crop tree release. So pretty open understory, pretty easy to walk through. And then as, um, as time goes on, uh, and once you complete that project, you are gonna be putting a lot of trees on the ground. And as a result of that, you are gonna have a lot of coarse woody debris, a lot of trees laying on the ground. Now these trees can certainly be utilized for firewood most commonly. So this isn't gonna be a, um, a type of harvest that is gonna be really commercially uh, applicable. So you're not gonna be able to take these trees and sell them to a mill. Um, there's just not really much value in those trees. The, the highest value that you potentially you're gonna be able to see or to get um, from these trees is gonna be firewood. Um, so you could utilize those or you can basically leave them lay out there for uh, habitat and structure for wildlife. Um, but another thing to consider is that um, as these um, uh, trees um, are cut down, um, you are going to be getting a lot more um, brush um, growing up in the understory. And so if you have uh, in particular invasive species, um, it's really going to be important to try to uh, control those prior to opening up the canopy. So if you have species like um, honeysuckle or autumn olive or tree of heaven in the stand, it would be really important to try to get rid of those prior to the stand because once you open up the canopy, you're going to get a lot of species like blackberry, raspberry, greenbriars, a lot of other seedlings and saplings uh, developing into that stand. Um, and so it will create a, as that canopy is allowing sunlight to hit the ground, it will cause a lot of uh, new growth to become established. Um, which kind of brings me to one of the other things that I want to talk about is while primarily um, the, uh, with crop tree release, you're typically using a, a chainsaw to accomplish those goals. Um, you could also use other tools. Um, so just um, one of the other techniques is uh, done through girdling trees. Um, as you can see here in the, in the background of this picture uh, near where my mouse is, this is a tree that's been girdled. Um, I believe in some of the Ohio State Extension fact sheets, which I imagine Dave will be sharing with you on crop tree release. It will give you a little bit of a, um, a description as to what girdling uh, will do. Um, girdling is a basically a slower way of um, killing the tree, but you're basically allowing that tree to uh, stand um, and basically still take up space, but it's uh, no longer going to be competing for sunlight, um, at least after a certain period of time. Now, one thing to keep in mind with girdling trees 
is certain species um, may end up dying within a couple weeks, um, while other species, um, it may take five or six years before those trees will uh, completely die and the leaves will be gone. And really what it has to deal with is how that tree moves water um, up the system. So there's a little bit of a, a difference with regards to that. Um, some folks will actually use herb herbicides to get rid of the, uh, the trees that they no longer want in the stand. Uh, when, if you get into using herbicides in a crop tree release, uh, you really wanna make sure that you're not getting any herbicide on any of the, the crop trees um, that you are trying to manage for. because um, you don't wanna be causing any adverse effects uh, to those. And um, the, the last thing that I um, want to do here, and I need to... All right, we are back here with our black oak. We talked about free to grow rating. Um, before this tree had a free to grow rating of zero. Now if we take a look up after the release work has been done, you'll see that this tree now has room to grow outwards in all four quadrants. So what we have done for this tree is given this tree the ability to get a lot more sunlight to increase its growth rate. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to maintain uh, its dominant uh, canopy position and continue to grow in a remarkably, or begin to grow in a remarkably fas fast fashion. So with that, I think that's a um, kind of a, a really quick introduction to crop tree release. Um, I will uh, stop sharing my screen and kind of kick things back over to Dave, but I think we might have time for a, a question or two. So I'm looking at the chat box and the question and answer, and I just see one question about what is meant by a heritage tree when choosing what is to be harvested. Um, so when it gets into heritage trees, those essentially are going to be the way that I would interpret that is those are kind of your, your legacy trees or trees that have been usually left behind following a harvest um, of, a, of another kind. Um, and so uh, perhaps in a what would have been a clear cut, they left a, a few trees behind. Usually in a crop tree release, we're not really so much dealing with those trees. 